ITER is the world's most ambitious nuclear fusion project. Its goal is to create clean, limitless energy by replicating the power of the sun. If successful, it could change how we power the world. To understand why this project is so groundbreaking, let's start with what fusion energy actually is. Nuclear fusion is the process that powers the sun and stars. It happens when two light atomic nuclei, usually hydrogen, collide and merge to form a heavier nucleus, like helium. This reaction releases a huge amount of energy. Unlike burning fossil fuels or splitting atoms in nuclear fission, fusion doesn't produce harmful greenhouse gases or long-lasting radioactive waste. To make fusion happen, extreme conditions are needed. The hydrogen atoms must be heated to incredibly high temperatures, over 150 million degrees Celsius. At this temperature, the atoms turn into plasma, a superheated state of matter where electrons are separated from the nuclei. In this state, the nuclei move fast enough to overcome their natural repulsion and fuse together, releasing energy in the form of heat. Fusion is different from nuclear fission, the process used in today's nuclear power plants. Fission splits heavy atoms, like uranium, into smaller ones releasing energy. While fission can produce large amounts of power, it also generates a radioactive waste that remains dangerous for thousands of years. Fusion, on the other hand, produces almost no long-term waste, and its fuel, hydrogen isotopes like deuterium and tritium, is abundant in water and lithium. The potential of fusion energy is enormous. It could provide a nearly limitless supply of clean electricity. Unlike fossil fuels, it doesn't rely on scarce resources, and unlike solar or wind, it can produce energy continuously, regardless of weather conditions. Now that we know how fusion works, Let's see why ITER is the key to making it a reality. The idea of nuclear fusion as an energy source has been around for decades. Scientists have long known that fusion, the process that powers the sun, could provide nearly limitless energy without harmful emissions or long-lived radioactive waste. However, achieving fusion on Earth has proven incredibly difficult. Research into controlled fusion began in the mid-20th century with early experiments in the 1950s and 60s showing promise but failing to reach the necessary conditions for a sustained reaction. Over the years, scientists built increasingly advanced fusion reactors, but none could maintain plasma long enough to generate useful energy. By the 1980s, fusion research had advanced significantly, but progress was slow due to the immense costs and technical difficulties involved. No single country could afford to develop fusion power alone. In 1985, during a summit between US President Ronald Reagan and Soviet leader Mikhail Gorbachev, the idea of an international fusion project was proposed. This led to the formation of ITER, short for International Thermonuclear Experimental Reactor, as a global collaboration to develop the first large-scale fusion reactor capable of demonstrating fusion power. ITER officially launched in 2007, bringing together 35 countries, including the United States, Russia, China, India, Japan, South Korea, and the European Union. Each member contributes funding, expertise, and crucial reactor components. Unlike traditional international projects where one country takes the lead, ITER is a shared effort where each partner is responsible for different parts of the reactor. For example, Japan is building parts of the superconducting magnets, while Europe is constructing the massive tokamak chamber. These components are shipped from around the world and assembled in France, making ITER one of the most complex international collaborations in history. If ITER succeeds, it could change the future of energy forever. Fusion power has the potential to provide nearly unlimited energy using only small amounts of fuel. Unlike fossil fuels, fusion does not produce greenhouse gases, meaning it could help fight climate change. Unlike nuclear fission, which powers current nuclear plants, fusion does not create long-lived radioactive waste or pose risks of catastrophic meltdowns. A successful ITER would pave the way for commercial fusion reactors, potentially replacing coal, gas, and even traditional nuclear power plants. However, ITER is not designed to produce electricity. Instead, its goal is to prove that fusion power is possible at a large scale. If successful, the knowledge gained from ITER will help scientists design the first generation of commercial fusion power plants, expected in the late 21st century. The long-term vision is to create fusion reactors that could supply energy to cities worldwide, 
providing a clean, abundant power source for generations to come. But making fusion power a reality is easier said than done. Let's take a look at the immense engineering challenges involved. IDER is one of the most complex engineering projects ever attempted, and its biggest challenge is building the tokamak. The tokamak is a massive donut-shaped reactor designed to contain and control the plasma needed for nuclear fusion. Unlike conventional power plants, IDER doesn't burn fuel in the traditional sense. Instead, it uses magnetic fields to trap superheated hydrogen gas, forcing the atoms to collide and release energy. But achieving this on Earth is incredibly difficult. One of the biggest hurdles is dealing with the extreme conditions inside the reactor. For fusion to happen, the plasma must reach temperatures of 150 million degrees Celsius, 10 times hotter than the core of the Sun. No solid material can withstand that heat, so the plasma must be suspended in midair using powerful magnetic fields. If it touches the walls of the reactor, it could cool down and stop the fusion process entirely. To generate these magnetic fields, IDER relies on massive superconducting magnets. These magnets are among the most advanced ever built. They are made from special materials that conduct electricity with zero resistance when cooled to extremely low temperatures. However, keeping them at such low temperatures is another major challenge. The magnets must be cooled to minus 269 degrees Celsius, which is close to absolute zero. This requires a complex cryogenic system making Eider one of the coldest places on Earth while also being home to one of the hottest. In addition to the extreme heat and cold, the materials used in the tokamak must withstand intense radiation. The fusion reaction releases high-energy neutrons, which can weaken and damage metal over time. Engineers are developing special materials that can survive years of exposure, but finding the right combination is still an ongoing challenge. With such extreme conditions, keeping everything under control requires cutting-edge technology and materials. IDER is designed to prove that nuclear fusion can be a reliable and sustainable energy source. And at the heart of this experiment is the ability to generate and sustain plasma. Plasma is the superheated state of matter where atoms collide with enough force to fuse together, releasing enormous amounts of energy. To achieve this, IDER will heat hydrogen isotopes, deuterium and tritium, to temperatures of 150 million degrees Celsius, which is 10 times hotter than the core of the Sun. At such extreme temperatures, the gas becomes a plasma, and the atomic nuclei have enough energy to overcome their natural repulsion and fuse. However, controlling plasma at such high temperatures is a major challenge. No physical material can contain it without being instantly destroyed. Instead, IDER will use powerful magnetic fields to confine the plasma in a donut-shaped chamber called a tokamak. This is where superconducting magnets play a crucial role. These magnets will generate a strong magnetic field to trap the plasma away from the chamber walls, keeping it suspended in the middle of the reactor. The toroidal field magnets, arranged around the tokamak, will provide stability, while poloidal field magnets will shape and control the plasma's movement. The superconducting magnets in IDER must generate fields much stronger than those used in current fusion experiments. To achieve this, they are made from niobium tin and niobium titanium materials, which become superconducting at extremely low temperatures. When cooled, these materials can carry massive electrical currents without resistance, allowing them to produce intense magnetic fields. However, this requires an advanced cryogenic system to keep the magnets at temperatures close to absolute zero. The cryogenic system in ITIR is one of the most sophisticated in the world. It will use liquid helium to cool the magnets to minus 269 degrees Celsius, just 4 degrees above absolute zero. Without this cooling system, the magnets would not function properly and the plasma would become unstable. Additionally, IDER will need to maintain a near-perfect vacuum inside the tokamak to prevent any contaminants from interfering with the plasma. The vacuum system will remove any unwanted particles, creating a space where the fusion reaction can take place without interruption. Another key challenge is sustaining the plasma long enough for meaningful energy production. In previous experiments, plasma has only been maintained for a few seconds. IDER aims to sustain plasma for several minutes at a time demonstrating that fusion can be a continuous process. To do this, it will rely on external heating systems, including neutral beam injection and radio frequency waves, 
These systems will add extra energy to the plasma, helping to keep it hot and stable. If either succeeds, it will demonstrate that fusion energy is not just a theoretical possibility, but a real scalable energy source. However, developing and integrating all these complex systems is an enormous task. Every component, from the superconducting magnets to the vacuum chamber, must work together perfectly to achieve the conditions necessary for fusion. The project requires the highest levels of precision engineering, as even the smallest error could lead to failure. But this massive project isn't just about technology, it's also a logistical puzzle on an unprecedented scale. The IDER project is one of the most complex construction efforts in history. Located in Catarache, France, the site spans over 180 hectares, nearly the size of 250 football fields. This massive facility is being built to house the world's largest and most advanced tokamak, a device designed to control nuclear fusion. The scale of the project is staggering, with thousands of workers, engineers, and scientists collaborating to assemble a machine unlike anything ever built. Constructing ITER is not just about building a reactor. It involves developing entirely new technologies, overcoming extreme engineering challenges, and coordinating international efforts on an unprecedented level. One of the biggest challenges of ITER is transporting and assembling its components. Unlike traditional power plants, which are built largely on-site, IDA relies on parts manufactured across the world. Over 35 countries contribute different sections of the reactor, with massive components shipped from locations as far as Japan, India and the United States. Some of these pieces weigh hundreds of tons and require specialized transport. Roads and bridges have been reinforced to handle the extreme weight, and convoys carrying these components move at walking speed to ensure safety. It can take weeks for a single shipment to arrive at the site, and each component must be carefully inspected before assembly begins. Any mistake in transport or handling could lead to costly delays. Once the components arrive, the challenge shifts to assembling them with extreme precision. The Tokamak superconducting magnets, for example, must be positioned within millimeter accuracy despite their enormous size. These magnets, which will create the powerful magnetic fields needed to contain the plasma, must be cooled to temperatures colder than deep space. Even a small misalignment could cause major issues once the reactor is operational. Special cranes, robotic arms, and laser-guided positioning systems are being used to ensure that every part fits perfectly. Like many large-scale projects, IDER has faced significant delays and cost overruns. Originally, it was planned to generate its first plasma by 2016. But technical challenges, material shortages, and the complexity of international collaboration pushed the timeline back. The latest estimates suggest that the first plasma reaction might not happen until the 2030s. Costs have also soared. Initially budgeted at $5 billion, the total cost is now estimated to exceed $25 billion. Critics argue that these delays and expenses raise doubts about whether fusion can ever be a practical energy source. Another reason for the high cost is the need for completely new infrastructure. The power supply systems, cryogenic facilities, and radiation shielding must be designed from scratch. Unlike traditional reactors, which rely on well-established designs, ITER is a first-of-its-kind experiment meaning every component must be tested and refined before full-scale implementation. Even the materials used in ITER must withstand extreme conditions. Plasma temperatures reaching 150 million degrees Celsius, intense radiation exposure, and magnetic forces stronger than any created on Earth. The international collaboration behind ITER also introduces challenges. With so many countries involved, coordinating efforts, managing resources, and ensuring that all components meet strict safety standards is a massive logistical task. Communication barriers, regulatory differences, and political changes in member countries have all contributed to delays. Each partner is responsible for delivering specific components. And if one country faces delays, it affects the entire project. Managing such a vast network of contributors requires careful planning, problem-solving, and adaptability. Despite these challenges, the scale of IDER's construction is a testament to human ambition and scientific progress. No other project has attempted to recreate the power of the Sun on Earth at this level. If successful, IDER could pave the way for commercial fusion power plants, changing the future of energy forever. However, the question remains, 
will all the investment effort and innovation pay off? With so much invested in either, what will success or failure mean for the future of energy? If either succeeds, it could change the world. Fusion energy has long been seen as the ultimate power source, clean, virtually limitless, and without the dangerous waste of nuclear fission. Unlike fossil fuels, fusion does not produce carbon emissions, meaning it could play a major role in reducing global warming. It also avoids the long-lived radioactive waste associated with traditional nuclear power, making it a safer and more sustainable option. Success at either would prove that nuclear fusion is not just a theoretical idea, but a real practical energy source. A working either reactor would pave the way for the next generation of fusion reactors. Either itself is not designed to generate electricity, but it will demonstrate that a self-sustaining fusion reaction is possible at an industrial scale. Once this is achieved, engineers can design commercial reactors that produce more energy than they consume. Governments and private companies worldwide are already planning their own fusion projects, and a successful IDER would accelerate these efforts. The knowledge gained from IDER could lead to the first generation of power plants that provide clean energy to the grid. The timeline for seeing real-world benefits depends on how quickly scientists can apply IDER's lessons to future reactors. If IDER achieves its goals in the 2030s, the first commercial fusion reactors could be operational by the 2040s or 2050s. That may seem far away, but considering the long history of fusion research, it would be a major breakthrough. But what if either doesn't work as planned? What would failure mean for fusion energy? If either fails, it would be a major setback for nuclear fusion research. Governments and scientists have spent decades and billions of dollars on this project, hoping it would prove that fusion can be a reliable energy source. A failure could make governments less willing to fund future fusion projects, delaying progress by years or even decades. It might also discourage private investors who see fusion as a risky, expensive bet. However, failure does not necessarily mean the end of fusion energy. Even if either does not meet all its goals, the knowledge gained could still help improve future reactors. While either is the biggest fusion project, it is not the only one. Many private companies and other government-funded programs are exploring different approaches. Companies like Commonwealth Fusion Systems and Helion Energy are working on smaller, more flexible reactors that could be cheaper and faster to build. Governments in China, the US and the UK are also investing in alternative designs, such as stellarators and laser-driven fusion. If either struggles, these projects might take the lead in the race to make fusion power a reality. Even a partial success at either would be valuable. If it can sustain plasma for extended periods, even without full energy output, that would still be a breakthrough. Scientists would learn more about handling extreme conditions, which could guide the design of better reactors. Lessons from either's construction and operation could also help improve future fusion projects, reducing costs and technical barriers. With so much at stake, the world is watching either closely. But what do you think? Do you think either will succeed or is it too ambitious? 